Hey guys, so I'm gonna show you how to create these really cool images where you blend a photograph and text in Pixelmator Pro. I'm going to be using this jellyfish image that you can pull off of Pixabay. I will link to it down in the description. Make sure you tip your Pixabay creators. All right, let's jump right into it. So I've got my jellyfish image. I downloaded the highest resolution available on Pixabay. I'm just gonna right click and select open with Pixelmator Pro. So here in Pixelmator Pro, we've got our image. I'm gonna head on over to the layers panel and I'm going to right click and duplicate this original image. Now I'm going to disable our original image, select the new one and remove the background by hitting this icon in the top right of the UI. And we've lost a little bit of the jellyfish over here, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Now I'm going to duplicate the image with the removed background one more time. So now I have three versions of this image in my layers panel. You're going to see me duplicate layers many, many times throughout this tutorial because we're going to be manipulating the images. And I really like to just keep like the last version of my image just for safety. Now I'm going to disable one of my cutout images. So I just have one version of my jellyfish visible here and I'm going to reach for the text tool. You're going to want to use a pretty chunky font for this. I'm using something called, I think it's pronounced I fat. You see that there? That's what this font is called. It's a really fun font. So I'm going to change this text to say the word jelly. And now in my layers panel, I'm going to right click that text layer and select convert into shape. And now in our layers panel, you'll see what we've got here. We've actually got a group where each letter is its own individual shape that I can modify separately from the rest of the text. So at this point, what I'm going to do is disable all of my letters except for the J and I'm going to rotate it and resize it to kind of fit in with the head of the jellyfish. So to rotate easily, I'm just gonna grab this corner of my bounding box and I'm going to hold down the command key and that lets me rotate really simply there. And then I'm just going to be sort of distorting this letter and just kind of roughing out the placement of each of my letters. Okay, so I've got my letters generally filling the head of the jellyfish, but I think it could be a little bit more perfect. So now what I'm going to do is edit the points of all of these shapes one by one. So I'm just going to select the first letter here, J, and I'm going to double click on it really quick. And you'll see that I get all of these little edit points around my letter. I'm gonna zoom in way into my canvas, hold down the space bar to navigate to where I wanna be, and I can just individually grab these points and further modify the shape of my letters. And I can tell you right off the bat that there's gonna to be too many points for your letters. I find that when there's a lot of points, it's really hard to get smooth looking shapes with these letters. So what I like to do is just lasso drag multiple edit points and just hit the delete key to get rid of them. By reducing the number of edit points, you're gonna be able to get smoother looking letters. I like to call it addition by subtraction. And one thing that's gonna be really important for this design is that all of the letters touch each other at one point or another, preferably toward the bottom of the jellyfish head. Okay, we've got all of our letters mapped out. The next thing I'm going to do is head back over to my layers panel. I'm going to collapse all those letters and I'm going to bring that cut out jellyfish above our text. Now I'm going to right click and select create clipping mask. And now we've got the head of the jellyfish filling our letters. You can see that there is some of the white lettering still peeking out from under our jellyfish head. So there's a couple of things we can do at this point. We could go back to our specific letters and edit the points a little bit, which is what I'm going to do until I'm not really seeing any of that white lettering. And we can also grab the image of our jellyfish and I'm just going to sort of scale it up and widen it out to fill any other little white spaces we have. Oop, I see I have a little gap in my E. Let me just fix that edit point. 
All right, so far we're in really great shape. You know, you seem like the kind of person who likes to learn new things. Have you ever tried Skillshare? Skillshare is the world's largest online learning community for creatives like you and me. And as you can see, there are so many online courses for creative apps. So whether you're trying to get a promotion at work or you're trying to start a side hustle, you can learn how to do a lot of things on Skillshare, but it's not just for career development. There's also personal development courses too. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I am a famously terrible singer. My poor husband has to listen to me sing in the car. So when I saw this class on Skillshare, I was so excited because I always thought that being able to sing was a talent you had to be born with. It never occurred to me that I could actually learn it on Skillshare. Like all courses on Skillshare, this instructor is a real life professional in her field. And I'm only a few lessons in, but I've already picked up some great tips in this course that will help me realize my dream of being able to sing karaoke in public and not make a total fool of myself. And yeah, there are a lot of courses on Skillshare. So if you're a little intimidated or overwhelmed when you first get there, don't worry. Skillshare has designed learning paths to help you go from novice to pro in no time. They're handpicked classes meant to be taken in order that build on one another so they reinforce lessons. Most exciting, Skillshare is offering a free one month trial to the first 500 viewers who sign up using my link down in the description. So thank you Skillshare for not only sponsoring this video, but for offering this great deal to my amazing viewers. All right, let's go back to our jellyfish. All right, so now that we've got our letters cut out, let's disable all those layers and enable our original image layer. This is the full image. What I'm going to do is again, duplicate this just for safety in case we mess up and we wanna go back to that original image. And what we need to do is paint out the head of this jellyfish from this background. So we could grab the repair tool which is useful for erasing blemishes or other errant objects out of your image. But because the head of the jellyfish really is the subject of this image, I'm gonna undo that and instead I'm going to reach for the clone tool. What the clone tool does is it allows me to select part of my frame and paint it over another part of my image. So I'm gonna bring up that brush size and I'm going to hold down the option key and I get this new icon, this circle with the plus sign in front of it, and I'm going to click in the dark space in my image. And now when I hold down my mouse button, I can fill in the head of this jellyfish with the background. Now you can see I've started to repaint the jellyfish head. That's because I moved too far in my frame. So I'm gonna start again and create a new point. I'm gonna hold down the option key, head up to the top corner here on my frame, and I'm gonna color all this in. Anytime I feel like I'm getting too close to revealing the head again, I'm just gonna start again, hold down the option key and paint that out. Okay, now I'm going to enable our lettering again and see where we landed. I still think we need to paint out more of that head. So I'm gonna disable those layers again. I'm gonna select that image that we've been working on. I'm gonna, with the clone layer, hold down the option key and just paint out a little more. Okay, that looks good to me. But I do wanna add a little more pizzazz to this background. So I'm going to, in my layers panel, add a new layer by hitting this plus sign icon. And I've got an empty image layer. I'm gonna select the effects tool and I'm gonna get this little message here asking me if I wanna convert this layer, which yes, I do. Now I'm going to select add effect and head to generator and I'm going to grab this gradient fill. Now I'm gonna dial down the opacity of that fill so I can color pick from my image here. So I'm gonna grab this first color tag and I'm going to grab the eyedropper and I'm going to color pick like this dark blue. And then I'm gonna grab this white color tag here, grab the eyedropper once again, and I'm gonna pull like the purple. And I'm gonna dial up the opacity on this gradient and I'm going to change it to a radial gradient. And I'm going to hit this little loop button here so that the purple is in the center and the darker blue remains around the edges. I'm also gonna add one more effect here. Let's hit add effect, stylize, and I'm going to grab the light leak effect. And I'm going to select this option here called Orion. And I can play with these little light leaks. I just want it to look like this jellyfish isn't alone in the sea, like there's other things happening. I'm gonna dial up the sunniness and I'm going to dial down the amount so they kind of fade into the background. 
All right, so all of that work we just did has kind of obscured the body of our jellyfish. That's where this other layer that is disabled is going to come into play. Before I do anything, I'm going to duplicate it. So we have two versions and then I'm gonna enable one of those duplicates. And now you can see the body of the jellyfish is back, but we've obscured our letters. I'm just going to use the erase tool. I'm gonna bring up that brush size to start and I'm really going to pump up that softness. And I'm just gonna start erasing the head of the jellyfish. I'm gonna be super careful here. And I'm just really gonna erase the very tops. Now I'm gonna bring down my brush size. I'm gonna zoom in tight. And I'm gonna do a lot more detail work. And I wanna stop where my letters connect. Remember I said it's really important that our letters touch each other on this one. And we're very close to being done, but if I'm gonna be really picky, I feel like I can see this kind of hard edge where the letters stop and the image underneath begins, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this top image and the letters and that image we've been working on. I'm going to right click and group them. Then I'm going to duplicate that group. Remember, I love to duplicate my layers in case I wanna move backward and I don't have to undo everything I just did. I'm going to disable my original group. So it's still there, but I can't see it. I'm going to select the group copy, right click, and I'm going to merge. So this is all one flat image. Now I'm going to reach for the smudge tool and I'm just going to kind of smudge out that sharp edge. And there you go, guys, that is our finished image. If you wanna see more Pixelmator Pro tutorials on this channel, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to snap up that amazing deal from Skillshare. I picked out some other videos I think you might enjoy. You guys, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you again.